Hi, I'm James Clark. I'm the co-founder of Room 214. I'm here with my friend Gail Van Gills. She's the founder of Transform Your Culture. Hi, Gail. Welcome back. Thanks, James. Great yeah. to be here. Thanks. So um, we're now on a topic uh, that we like to call connect and succeed. And if I could kind of move that into some Room 214 language, more like kindness and curiosity. Mm -hmm. um, but more about that is really about creating culture uh, that gives us the ability to be collaborative despite maybe having different backgrounds, upbringings, inputs. So, you know, how do we then create a collaborative work culture with so many different perspectives at the table? So having different perspectives is super important. Of course, in creativity, it's, it's the clash of ideas. You know how sometimes they say that the best ideas come out of people who randomly come across each other. And if people are completely segmented into their structured um, job roles, that the ideas would never have sparked. So we want to come in contact with other ideas. But one of the issues is um, if we have difficulty with somebody's position, whether we can feel open or and empathetic to them if we perceive them as different or not. So I think part of connecting and succeeding is do we have the ability to be as kind and empathetic to somebody that we consider to be not in our in-group? So this is a really pretty typical junior high school and high school issue, right? right? Being in the like in it. crowd or the out crowd. Mm -hmm. Well, it turns out that this is a human issue. So in terms of our human evolution, um, it's quite interesting that part of what allowed us to evolve was taking care of each other in small groups. So you would start with like the family union. Of course, the family is like you. And then maybe the tribal unit and maybe even out to the city unit or the country unit in the ways that countries were defined, all those people were just like you. They really came from a similar uh, pool, gene pool and similar idea pool, particularly if we're talking in the earlier stages like family and tribe. And so it seems that that um, empathetic response is a little bit keyed to people being just like me. And it may make it difficult to collaborate if you think someone is really different than you on some dimension that matters to you. And so from an empathy standpoint then is trying to understand those differences or maybe accept those differences? Or is it one of those things where we talked a little bit earlier about having a maybe like an awareness and an understanding if you're in a difficult conversation with them that they might be thinking the same thing you are. They might be wanting the same thing you are, um, but you don't quite understand that. Yeah, I do think you're on the right track. I think it comes from having some self-awareness of what you're thinking and feeling, and then being curious in your own mind to start with. So I wonder what they're thinking and feeling. Why is this, why are we not gelling? Why am I not caring? about what's happening to them. What's, what's making me so cold and cut off from that person? And if you begin to get curious, you can actually do a mental exercise where let's say it's you and, and you're my boss and I think that you know, you're privileged and you don't suffer in the same ways that I do. This is my perception of you. You've got life easy. I'm just beginning in the company and you don't ask my opinion enough and you know, I don't really, I don't really feel comfortable with you, so I'm not gonna share my ideas with you right now, right? So how could I get over that? I could actually do a mental exercise where I think to myself, well, James has a family and children just like me, and he wants them to be happy just as I do. And James gets up and comes to work every day, and he wants to do a good job just like I do just like me. And on and on, you can go down through the ways in which you're similar, where you feel your basic humanity, and you can begin to soften your um, sense of distinction and boundary between yourself and the other person, just in that sense of caring for them and seeing them as fully human, just as you are, instead of a caricature. 
Yeah, we often talk about here is like we want individuals to show up as themselves. Mm -hmm. And when they, when collectively we put these individuals together, it makes a richer tapestry of the agency. And sometimes uh, as an agency that actually has a very strong culture, we need to be very aware that they're not actually turning into our culture. It's like the reason why our culture is strong and survives today is because everybody brought themselves to the table. And that, that's like that diversity of just being yourself and then mixing that with a bunch of others really is what powers us as an organization. Yeah, I, so I think that's a really good point. And I think that in this sense, we're not actually talking about blending or getting rid of any kind of distinctions. It's actually that the way you connect and succeed is through having respect for the other person, mm -hmm. having care for the other person, seeing their humanity so that you can, you can care on that level to interact because if you don't actually care about them you might not interact you might not help them you might not be part of their project you might not share your good idea so it's a it's a level of um, empathy caring and um, attitude that we're talking about here yeah so what i'm hearing is just like we in order to get through maybe our biases really is to be just simply interested in someone else that idea of like curiosity yeah. just having a Understanding of interest and curiosity in the other person is a way to go right through yeah. that idea of being biased. Yeah, it's the idea of getting, cutting through the wall of thinking that they're different. Just go straight to the heart of the matter. They're a human being just like me and go for it. Yeah, be interested in them. Yeah. Awesome. All right, well, thanks, Gail. Thank you. All right.